Okay, I want to go very quickly through what was the type of discussion which led up to the need to take such a statement. It's the crucial thing is, right, okay, I want to be clear, what, what is the nature of this statement? It's an anti-Cold War statement. It's not a pro-China statement. It's um, the new Cold War is a threat to human humanity. I know here some signatories support China's policies and methods of development. Other signatories may oppose parts of China's development or even all of it. Um, I don't know the views of all the speakers and signatories. But what unites them is that they all agree a new Cold War will be against the interests of humanity. It will take humanity backwards. I would like to give examples by looking at five of the urgent issues which face the whole of humanity. In this, I believe particularly important is the dialogue of speakers from the US and China, because as Carlos said, there's not nearly enough dialogue which takes place on, on that basis. Right? right. What is a new Cold War? It's not only about the US and China, it's an attempt by the present US administration to impose its policies on the world and to force other countries to follow these. What would be the consequences of success in this for the EU administration? What would they be the consequences for the whole of humanity? First, let's take with the COVID-19. The pandemic is completely out of control in the United States and rising internationally. As you can see on the graph on the right, when the US applied some lockdown measures as followed by other countries, there was a decline in the number of cases. These are now rising vertiginously. Look at also at the situation in Brazil, the country which follows the same policies. This would be a disaster for humanity. Literally millions of people would die if this policy were imposed. Second, the threat of war. The US in the last decades has launched major wars, most openly Iraq and Libya. But these wars brought disaster not only for these countries, but to entire regions. Destabilization of the Middle East and parts of Africa, rise of terrorist organizations operating internationally. The US administration has always taken dangerous steps, such as withdrawal from the INF and imposed unilateral sanctions. Of course, the threat of war with China itself would be an unimaginable catastrophe. Climate change. The US is the only country to formally withdraw from the Paris Climate Change Accords, but don't have any illusions. It's putting on huge pressure uh, onto countries such as Brazil and Saudi Arabia, which remain formally signatories in order to undermine the Paris Accords. This poses a catastrophe, the threat of a catastrophe for the planet and humanity. The issue of racism. Most of the world has been inspired, of course, by the huge protests in the United States since the racist killing of George Floyd and by the Black Lives Matter movement. But this is directly related to this threat of a new Cold War, because what has happened is that the US people have recognized it by these actions, clearly, that their main problems were made in the United States, not in other countries. What the US administration wants to do is to try to persuade people in all countries, including, for example, my own, that the problems are not made by people in their country, they're made by some other country. I remember it still because I'm old enough to be involved at the time in the movement against the Vietnam War, Muhammad Ali's inspiring words, I ain't got no quarrel with, with them Viet Cong. They never lynched you, never called you N words, never put dogs on you, never shot your leaders. Anti-Muslim rhetoric and actions are also a very serious threat. And we see in several countries the clear evidence that Chinese people would be added to the list of black people and Muslims in the list of racist targets. In short, a new Cold War would see a huge wave of international racism. Economic development and poverty reduction. Overcoming world poverty remains the decisive issue for humanity. We should never forget that 84% of the world's population lives in developing countries. This is literally a life or death question. The life expectancy in a low income economy is 17 years less than in the high income economy. China's raised over 860 million people out of World Bank to find poverty. Over 70% of all those lifted out of poverty in the world. But what is the US attempting to do now? I put down a graph which is the projection for the share of contributions to the world growth by the IMF in the next two years. China 51%, India 19%. The US is 
So what the US Cold War is attempting to do is to reorientate all countries in the world away from the most rapidly growing parts of the world economy and towards its relatively stagnant own economy. This would have very serious consequences for increases in world poverty and um, lack stop, lack, stop in economic development. So, to summarize, the threat of the new Cold War is not just about the United States and China. It is about, although of course they are the main actors in this, it's a threat to the whole of the humanity. And what is the alternative to do it? Which, which is to jointly work together to fight the pandemic, to oppose war, to fight climate change, to oppose every form of racism, to work together for peaceful economic development. Therefore, I believe that for the interest of humanity, there should be a simple slogan, no Cold War. And there has to be real international work around that. Thank you very much for listening.